In this video, I'm going to discuss diastereoisomerism, taking you through what a diastereoisomer is, how it differs from an enantiomer, the 2N rule, and meso compounds. A diastereoisomer is similar to an enantiomer in the fact that it is non superimposable. However, diastereoisomers do not form mirror images of one another, whereas enantiomers are compounds that are non superimposable mirror images. Diastereoisomers also tend to have different melting and boiling points and react differently, and diastereoisomers need to contain two or more chiral centres, apart from those that arise from the restriction around a double bond. I will talk about that more in my next video. Firstly, let me introduce the 2N rule. N represents the number of chiral centres in a compound. Therefore, if we find a compound with two chiral centres, 2 squared is 4. The number 4 represents the number of stereoisomers we have for this compound. If 4 chiral centres, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 equals 16, representing the number of stereoisomers that are possible. Remember that there are always exceptions to this rule. Let's use an example to give a visual representation of what I have meant so far. Let's consider this molecule here a diol with two chiral centres. There are therefore four stereoisomers of this compound. Let's draw one of the four stereoisomers in a way that allows us to determine R, S configuration easily. Put the carbon chain in the plane and the lowest priority group facing away at each chiral centre. And we end up with this. Now we can generate the three other stereoisomers by inverting chiral centres. We invert both, then one, and then the other. For example, we form SS, RS, and SR. So now let's classify our stereoisomers. The RR and the SS are a pair of enantiomers, non-superimposable mirror images, and so are the RS and SR. But what about our diastereoisomers? This would be RR and RS, and RR and SR. SS and RS, and SS and SR. This is because these compounds are not mirror images of one another, as shown here. Therefore, in order to create an enantiomer, all the chiral centres in the compound must be inverted. As I said at the start, there are always exceptions to the 2N rule when predicting the number of stereoisomers, and this is where meso compounds come in. If we look at this compound here, we would expect it to have four stereoisomers due to it containing two chiral centres. However, if we look more closely, we can see that there is a line of symmetry within the 2R3S and the 2S3R stereoisomers. Therefore, it is not chiral and we only have three stereoisomers. We have a meso compound, which can be defined as a stereoisomer of a compound which has a chiral stereoisomer that has a mirror plane of symmetry. Therefore, it could be said that the 2N rule allows us to predict the maximum number of stereoisomers, but the real number may be fewer. In the next video, we will look at diastereoisomerism in alkenes, Thanks for watching, please like and share the video.